Hello and welcome back to another historical background video of Company of Heroes 2. Uh, this video will uh, be about the German uh, vehicles of the Wehrmacht, or uh, as it is known in game, the Ostheer. Um, like the previous video, this will not be about gameplay, but it will be uh, about the historical background of the units that are used in game and I will talk about uh, production and um, how common uh, a vehicle was at the front uh, wha uh, what did it perform like what was its role and uh, some things you will notice that are a bit unrealistic in this game uh, but even though the developers of Company of Heroes 2 never have stated that they were uh, thriving for realism. There's actually a lot about this game which is quite realistic. So, um, let's start with uh, an omission I had uh, with my first video about the infantry because I did not um, I did not uh, uh, talk about uh, a weapon which is very um, very important in the German army because um, I talked about various uh, infantry units but I actually forgot about to talk uh, to talk about the Panzerfaust. The Panzerfaust is a very uh, very important weapon for the uh, Wehrmacht and, and actually uh, uh, every unit in the Wehrmacht was equipped with one. Um, uh, let's see if I can um, make this one enemy, yes. And then I can fire the Panzerfaust at it. And okay, uh, so as you could see, the grenadiers were firing the Panzerfaust at the tank, and the tank did not get damaged very much. But uh, the Panzerfaust was um, considered am ammunition, not a real weapon, and that's why the Panzerfaust was uh, not uh, uh, recorded in any. Um, reports about the uh, dealing out of uh, weaponry among uh, units. The Panzerfaust came in various uh, variants, like the earliest one was the Panzerfaust 30, and later uh, the Panzerfaust 60 and the Panzerfaust 100 were produced, and those numbers were just uh, representing the range of the Panzerfaust. Um, the Panzerfaust was a single-use weapon. Uh, you should fire it at uh, the uh, from below your arm. And if we just have it uh, fire again, then we might be able to see that the that the grenadier is actually firing it under the arm, like in reality. Uh, the only problem is that it's uh, not actually uh, discarding the weapon, as in real life. It the model puts the Panzerfaust back on his backside. Uh, which is a bit weird, because uh, in reality the soldier would just toss the Panzerfaust away. The Panzerfaust was um, uh, consisted of two parts, the tube and the warhead. The warhead would go into the tank and the tube would be thrown away. Okay, well, uh, that concludes the part about the Panzerfaust. Let's kill these units, because I don't need them. And let's go to the first vehicle of this video. Uh, you need some 
reconnaissance. Yes, I need some reconnaissance because this is a reconnaissance vehicle. It's uh, called the Zonderkraft Fahrzeug 222. It's the successor of the Zonderkraft Fahrzeug 221, which was armed with only a machine gun. This is a uh, reconnaissance vehicle and it has um, a 37 millimeter uh, cannon mounted next to a machine gun, which is more powerful and can also shoot at planes. So uh, in game you might notice that this um, vehicle uh, sometimes aims into the air at a recon uh, strafe or bomb bombing planes of the enemy. Um, the uh, it's two centimeters, by the way, and not uh, three point seven. The um, recon uh, this one was uh, called by the Germans the Leichter Panzer Spielwagen, uh, which means the light armored uh, scout vehicle or spy vehicle. It was extensively used in the desert and on the Eastern Front in the early parts of the campaign. Uh, production stopped in 1943, so afterwards there were no new scout cars because they were uh, deemed too lightly armed. Um, this is an armored car and not a tank because it has wheels and no tracks. Uh, that's the most uh, important um, difference between tanks and tanks and uh, scout cars. Um, the scout car uh, uh, was uh, uh, succeeded by uh, another type of scout car, which is called the Zonderkraft Fahrzeug 223, and that one had a bigger uh, gun and a, a higher profile. It was rarer than the 222, which is the most common variant of this scout car. Okay, this is also a Leichter Panzer Spewagen, but this is uh, the one which is up armored with a uh, 5 cm cannon. And uh, this uh, one is called the 234, the Sonderkraftfahrzeug 234, and it has a nickname which is the Puma. Um, the a lot of uh, German vehicles were named after uh, cats, big cats, and uh, the Puma is one of those. This is also an armored car, as you can see, and it has uh, four wheels on both sides. Uh, this was actually a pretty uh, powerful gun, and, uh, because it was uh, uh, mounted in a turret on a light vehicle, it could use its speed and if it needed to retreat, it could use these smoke launchers, which you can see here, and they would pop uh, smoke grenades, and then the uh, Puma would be able to get away from any danger. Um, the Puma uh, was not a very common vehicle. It's uh, not, uh, it didn't reach as big uh, production numbers but it uh, still made an impression on the Allies and, um, and, and not as big an impression as the tanks though. Um, so, these are the armored cars. Let's continue with the half-tracks. This is the Zonderkraft Fahrzeug 251 and it's a half-track as you can see because it has wheels and it has uh, tracks. Uh, actually, this is not really a half track, uh, but more a three-quarter track, as you can see, as 75% of the wheels, or actually m even more, but 75% of the length of the vehicle is uh, driven uh, with the tracks. Um, the, these vehicles didn't have front-wheel drives, so uh, they were um, they were pushed forward by the tracks and uh, this made their off-road capabilities a lot better than with uh, real half-tracks from the Allies which were actually 50% uh, 
wheels and 50% track. Um, as you can see, this is an open-topped vehicle. It looks like it has a roof, but that's just uh, a thin cloth uh, being put over by the uh, guys that were sitting in this vehicle. Because in reality, this was an open-topped uh, car. The function of this car was to uh, bring soldiers into battle. Uh, apart from the driver, there would be 10 uh, soldiers inside the half track. The 251 had uh, two MGs, as you can see, one in the front and one in the rear. This half track has MG42s, the early ones had MG34s, and uh, the the 251 was the successor of the 250 and uh, this one was produced by the Hanomag factory and, and they uh, kept producing these throughout the war and although they were pretty common uh, most soldiers in the German army were not transported by these troop transport vehicles but simply by trucks uh, most notably the Opel Blitz, which is quite a normal truck. Um, uh, the advantages of the truck were that it could uh, house a lot more soldiers. The advantages of the half track was that it was armed and armored and uh, uh, was a lot safer for the soldiers to be transported in. Um, we can for a moment make this ready. territory mine um, territory points capture all okay so um, there were a bunch of variants of the 251 and in-game the function of this uh, transport vehicle is not to transport soldiers unfortunately because you can't put them inside. Uh, in reality there were ports uh, on the side through which the soldiers could fire um, MP40s but in-game this is not possible. Uh, what is possible is that the you can upgrade them with flamethrowers and the flamethrower upgrade is actually a real existing upgrade. The uh, flamethrowers, there were two of them as there are in game and uh, the flamethrower uh, version uh, uh, would have one flamethrower that was attached to the to the uh, vehicle and the other one would be detachable so that uh, people could be uh, standing next to the vehicle and then detach the flamethrower and uh, use it as an infantryman. So um, one would uh, stick to the vehicle and be used like you just saw and the other one would be used by a soldier next to the vehicle uh, or uh, from within the vehicle and uh, you could move it around with a bit more freedom. The Flampanzerwagen, uh, that was the, the name of the 251 with the uh, Flammenwerfer upgrade was the 251 slash 16 because the 251 had a lot of variants and there were over 20 uh, different versions with uh, different armaments uh, just before we saw the armament with DMG there were also 251s equipped with a PAC-35 a, a light anti-tank gun uh, and of course this one with the flamethrowers um okay let's go to the predecessor of the uh, 251 which is the 250 and we start with a 
variant, which was not very common. This is the 250-7. Uh, uh, it was a mortar half-track, as you can see. Uh, the mortar half-track would be um, uh, manned by a driver and a mortar crew. And the mortar crew would be similar as the uh, mortar crew in uh, in the infantry department. Let's see if I can make it attack. Yes. You could see here that the guys are putting the rockets inside the tube just as a normal mortar crew and they also behave the same as a normal mortar crew. The 250 was uh, pretty suitable for this because it had a wide open space and uh, in game you can make it barrage and you can also make it smoke barrage and there's also an incendiary chemical round and that was not really uh, in battle in reality. Uh, smoke was and uh, of course 8 centimeter mortar rounds also were part of the uh, order of battle in the Wehrmacht. Um, well this is the 250 slash 7 and the normal 250 is this one. And this is the, the general uh, uh, half track or three quarter track uh, on of the early war. Um, in the early stages of the war, in the invasion of Poland, in the invasion of France, and in the desert war in North Africa, this was the most common uh, armed personnel carrier. Uh, General Rommel in the desert. Uh, actually had a personal command 250 which was called the Greif and uh, he used to uh, uh, he used to attack with his tanks and uh, be in the front line himself in this vehicle. Uh, the 250 also had a large uh, number of variants but they were not as uh, they were not as common as the they were not as extended as the 251 because they had uh, about 12 variants instead of over 20. Uh, the 250 was not produced by uh, Hanomag, but they were produced by DMAG, an, uh, another company in uh, Germany that was producing armored half tracks. Uh, produ production ceased uh, during the later stages of the war in favor of the 251 and uh, the normal armament of this one would be an MG-34 in the beginning of the war and uh, later variants also were equipped with the MG-42. Um, there were uh, the most uh, variants of the 250 were meant to have uh, an ammunition uh, role to carry ammunition for example for the mortar half track that we just saw before there was a special extra uh, Munitionspanzerwagen and it would work together with the 250-7 uh, and it would carry 66 more mortar rounds so that it could uh, add to the 42 rounds already present in the uh, mortar half track. Uh, some other variants were uh, equipped with a Panzerbüchse which is an AT rifle and um, it's uh, the lightest AT rifle in the German army. Uh, it's an infantry AT rifle and it would be mounted on the half track just like the MG42 would be mounted here. Uh, a bit unrealistic here is that the MG42 seems to be floating in the air, but um, that must have to do with the model or something, because in reality it was mounted on a rail, so you could uh, swing it around 
in different directions. This brings us to the last uh, uh, half track that we have. This is actually not a D mark or a Hanna mark. This is a Maultier, uh, which is uh, some kind of a mule like uh, animal. Uh, what we see here is a different front panel and it has an MG42 with a shield mounted in front and uh, the vision slits for the driver are here and uh, this one was pretty heavily armored to um, uh, prevent it being taken out by light infantry weaponry. Um, the most important part of the Panzerwerfer is the Nebelwerfer rocket installation on the backside. And there were 10 tubes as you can see and uh, the Nebelwerfer was an, a weapon that the Wehrmacht used on static positions to uh, launch rockets into enemy positions. Um, there were uh, various rocket uh, launching installations. The there was the uh, Wurfrahmen and the Nebelwerfer and the Nebelwerfer was also mounted on this Maultier armored personnel uh, or um, armored car half track and um, the Maultier would uh, sport this Nebelwerfer thing and then you could fire rockets with it. Uh, let's see if we can do a barrage so that you can see what it looks like when it fires and the rockets are being fired and while they are being fired the MG gunner uh, takes cover inside the vehicle which is very wise because of the, um, uh, the blasts that the rockets are producing when firing. Um, this concludes the part which is about half tracks and armored cars. Let's continue with the uh, the self-propelled guns. We start with the early Stug. This is a Stug, and the Stug. The Stug is a, uh, an abbreviation for Sturmgeschütz. Um, what we can see here is uh, that it has a chassis of uh, a Panzer III. The Stugs were produced on the chassis of the Panzer III because the uh, Panzer III uh, was the main uh, tank in the German army in the Battle of France. And uh, when uh, Hitler uh, decided to invade uh, the Soviet Union, they pretty soon found out that the Panzer III was not powerful enough to deal with most Russian tanks. So production of the Panzer III w uh, ceased, and they moved on to the uh, uh, to the extension of the production of the Panzer IV, and they started developing Panzer V and Panzer VI. Uh, about uh, which I will tell something more later. Um, because production of the Panzer III ceased, there were a lot of chassis that were still being uh, produced and just not finished. And in order to not scrap that uh, metal and uh, make good use out of it, they uh, turned those into Stugs. And the Stug III had various variants and the earliest ones all had this short barrel here which is uh, 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 Lang 24 uh, if I'm not mistaken. This is a short barrel gun which is supposed to fire high explosive shells and it was designed to take out bunkers and other fortified positions. So in game, the uh, Stug 3E used to be a flat trajectory uh, weapon, which is realistic. And some patches ago, they changed it to be more like a, a mortar, like this. And actually, this is not realistic for the Stug E anymore. 
um, but it is realistic if you think about the fact that the Germans uh, also made a Sturm Haubitze 42 and that is uh, an assault howitzer uh, that one had uh, a bigger gun uh, the 75 millimeter uh, gun for lobbing high explosive shells on fortified positions so actually the Stug E in game is a mix of the real Stug E and the Sturm Haubitze 42 um, the best properties of the Stug 3 were the low profile was the low profile as you can see it's not a very high vehicle and uh, that means that uh, enemy tanks would not be able to see it so easily this was a big advantage for the Stug because that means it would be able to ambush enemy tanks a lot easier and um, and uh, uh, also they would not be able to hit the Stug so uh, easily when they would encounter one um, the Stug was developed uh, and had also a lot of variants and the most common variant in game is this one the Stug uh, 3G the Stug 3G was equipped with the 7.5 cm uh, uh, anti-tank gun it's the same as the Pac-40 and uh, this uh, was the most commonly produced vehicle in the German army over uh, over a thousand of these were produced and they were also uh, being uh, sent to every front uh, available in the Second World War uh, they have been fighting in, in France, in the desert and on the Eastern Front as well uh, actually the number of produced Stugs even exceeded 11,000 which is uh, very exceptional for a German vehicle because the German uh, high command and especially Hitler himself uh, always wanted to improve on uh, armored designs so they were pushing for new designs they wanted to see uh, 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 stronger tanks, faster tanks and uh, better tanks so they would um, push for uh, uh, better uh, and uh, uh, new, newly, more newly developed tanks so uh, production of earlier versions would cease this is not, this does not go for the Stug Ausführung G because this one was just uh, being produced until the end of the war um, as you can see here there's a top turret uh, gunner and there's also the Stug also uh, was uh, some variants were also equipped with a uh, with a side MG here a coaxial MG next to the barrel um, in the late war there were units that were entirely consisting of a Stug 3 Ausführung G uh, and that means that they were uh, supporting uh, bigger tanks like the Tiger and uh, that was quite uh, successful um, and they were uh, li like I said this is the most used vehicle by the German army in the Second World War um, let's continue with the next vehicle on our list it's the Sturmpanzer and uh, this Sturmpanzer is based on the chassis of the Panzer IV that's why it's called Sturmpanzer IV um, you can also see that it has a nickname uh, Brumbeer but that's not a, a nickname um, invented by the Germans instead it was invented by the Allies the Germans called this one the Stupa which is uh, very simple uh, it's uh, an abbreviation of Sturmpanzer the task of the Sturmpanzer was uh, to break down enemy fortified positions uh, because it has a howitzer that you can see here it's uh, if you just um, uh, 
listen to the, uh, what I told you about the Stug 3, then you can see that this also has a short barrel and that means that it is not meant to destroy other tanks and instead it's to destroy um, fortified positions. Let's see if we can make it fire, for example, here. And then you can see that it also lobs a shell and it does not uh, have a flat trajectory. This also can be upgraded with an MG42, like the Stug 3 Ausführung G. And uh, this one is an infantry murdering machine in game and it also uh, was uh, in real life. This was not a very common vehicle, uh, in, in contrary to the Stug that we were talking about earlier. Uh, the Sturmpanzer uh, did not see so much action at the front. Um, there were different versions and actually the versions only uh, made a difference in uh, the type of gun and the uh, armament. Uh, actually uh, that goes for all German vehicles in the Second World War. If you have a new version it means that there's more armor on the sides uh, it also means that sometimes there's a heavier gun and uh, this one was only produced in uh, uh, about a few hundred um, vehicles in the entire war which means it was pretty rare okay on to the next vehicle which is a huge tank destroyer here we can see the elephant elephant means elephant it's a very big animal of course and it also is a very big vehicle and uh, the elephant is actually the second version of another vehicle called the Ferdinand the Ferdinand uh, the differences are that the Elephant has a coaxial machine gun and um, and uh, the, uh, the Ferdinand was uh, invented by the Porsche factory and because the, uh, the owner of the factory was called Ferdinand Porsche the uh, vehicles were also uh, um, the vehicles were also called Ferdinands the uh, Ferdinand uh, was meant to be a defensive tank destroyer and therefore it was a very heavy vehicle and it had an 88 millimeter gun mounted in the hull. And this uh, is not a tank because the turret can't traverse and to be able to aim at a tank uh, which was over 25 degrees to the left or the right the entire vehicle had to be turned uh, this was a weakness uh, which was um, uh, only uh, not so much of a problem if the Ferdinand would not be engaging the tanks at close distance the Elephant was uh, uh, uh the, the changes to the Elephant were made after the Battle of Kursk because in the Battle of Kursk uh, the uh, Elephants uh, were uh, the Ferdinands were used as some kind of a breakthrough tank which is totally the wrong way to use uh, Ferdinand um, there were infantry attacks on the uh, Ferdinand which made it uh, which made it uh, 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 the infantry attacks could uh, re easily hurt the Ferdinand and uh, uh, what they uh, did to the Elephant was therefore they added the MG-34. Uh, this is a late war vehicle in 1943 in the Battle of Kursk. They, uh, uh, the Battle of Kursk was actually postponed by the Germans in order to be able to use these vehicles. and. Um, as you might have noticed, the MG42 was more commonly used in the late war uh, instead of the MG34. So why were they using the MG34 in uh, this uh, 
vehicle. That's uh, because the barrel of the MG34 was, easy, uh, was much easier to replace than uh, the barrel of the MG42 because you could uh, dismount the barrel of the MG34 in a longitudinal way, which is much easier to do in the confined space of an armored vehicle. And the Elephant uh, was also up-armored. Uh, uh, the Elephant w uh, had a weight of 70 tons and uh, because it was heavier, the tracks were widened and uh, because of the infantry attacks, the outside of the vehicle was covered with so-called cimerit, which is some kind of a plastic kind of paint with um, an erratic surface which made it harder to uh, use magnetic mines or uh, sticky bombs because they would just uh, stick to the paint and then the paint would fall off or the magnetic mine would not stick because it was not metal but uh, some sort of plastic um, and then the explosive would not hurt the vehicle so much. Um, so uh, these were used at in the Eastern Front, but uh, actually only in the Ferdinand version. Uh, the elephants were mostly used in Italy. Um, so, what's realistic about this uh, vehicle? Uh, actually, it's a uh, it's not an elephant, but a Ferdinand, uh, because it doesn't have an MG in game. Uh, you can see an MG here, but you can't fire it. Uh, in-game at infantry, I guess. Uh, let's just test that out for a bit. We make a conscript squad and then we and then we make this Selection owner enemy. Oh, yeah, it has uh, the MG firing, so it actually is an elephant. Okay, thank you, guys. Uh, so, this actually is an elephant. The MG34 has a lower rate of fire that you might have noticed compared to the MG42. Um, so this is actually uh, quite realistic. The uh, thing that is not so realistic is that most elephants were not used on the Eastern Front, but instead they were used in Italy. Okay, so let's move on to our next vehicle, which is also uh, on the chassis of a Panzer IV. Just like the Sturmpanzer IV, the Ostwind is uh, it's called Flakpanzer IV, as you can see here in the description. Flak means Flug, Abwehrkanone, which means it's anti-aircraft, and uh, it has a 37 mm anti-aircraft gun here. The Ostwind was the successor of the earlier Wirbelwind, which had a Flak 38, and even though the Flak 38 had four guns, it was uh, less uh, doing less damage against planes than this gun here because it was a 2 centimeter gun instead of a 3.7 centimeter gun. Um, it was uh, th the chassis of the Panzer IVs uh, were uh, mostly uh, recovered wrecks from the battlefield. So the Panzer IVs that were uh, destroyed in battle uh, for example, the turret would be blown off, uh, then uh, it would be salvaged, the chassis would return to Germany, and it would be refitted with this um, turret here, uh, uh, and armored with uh, and armed with the 37 mm gun. Uh, this Flakpanzer was uh, not produced in early war because the Germans didn't need any Flakpanzers because they had air superiority themselves. Stukas and Messerschmitts were roaming the air without any real opposition. Um, Mid-1942-1943, this balance started to change in favor of the Allies, and uh, then the uh, Germans were 
checking out what they could do against it. And uh, in 1944, they started producing the uh, first the rear ball wind as a, a successor of the Möbelwagen, the first Flakpanzer in the German army. And then after that came this Ostwind. Uh, only about a hundred uh, or so of these were produced. So this was a very rare vehicle. It also was a high priority target for uh, enemy planes because, yeah, uh, you first want to take out the vehicle that is threatening your existence and after that you would want to um, continue with uh, taking out other targets. So, the Flakpanzer could also be used as an anti-infantry weapon very nice detail here is that this guy is the spotter. He has some sort of a scope in his hand. And uh, the Ostwind could attack with the gun and also with a coaxial machine gun in front. And um, this concludes the uh, story about the Flak Panzer IV, which was based off the Panzer IV's chassis. The Panzerfeer that we see here is the Panzer Panzerfeer Ausführung F2. Um, this um, uh, Panzerfeer was uh, coming in various variants. There were uh, in game there are only two. The um, uh, if you don't count the theater of war uh, vehicles, but if you just count the multiplayer vehicles, we have the Panzer IV Ausführung D and the Panzer IV Ausführung uh, F2. Um, the F2 uh, is one of the uh, most numerous ones because it was uh, being built as a reaction to the upcoming threat of the T-34. Um, the Panzer IV had uh, had uh, 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 a huge role. It was the it was the successor of the Panzer III, and um, the chassis was uh, 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 different. It had more road wheels on the lower part and less road wheels on the upper part compared to the Panzer III, and uh, it had a the um, most important difference was that the uh, gun was a lot better. This is also the seven. 0.5 centimeter gun, which is the same as the Pak 40 and the same as the Stug uh, 3 Ausführung G. And um, as you can see here on this model, the Cupola uh, has, uh, and there can be a commander here with an MG 42. There's also a coaxial machine gun, you can see it here. And here's the vision slit for the driver. These are the headlights for driving at night. And uh, the Panzer IV is, uh, well, it's uh, it never really became the backbone of the German army. Because, as I said before, uh, Adolf Hitler especially, but also some other uh, persons in the German high command, were um, giving preference to, uh, to uh, go uh, with new uh, and improved designs every uh, so many months. The um, gun uh, is the KWK 40L43. It means the Kampfwagen Kanone Lang uh, 43. And uh, this is the uh, this tank was produced in pretty big numbers and. Um, the most were produced in uh, 19, 1944, uh, with uh, numbers reaching over 3,000. In total, there were uh, about 8,000 of these tanks, and uh, if uh, the Panzerkampfwagen IV was uh, made to be the main tank of the German army, that might have uh, changed the course of the war entirely. Um so let's take a look at the other uh, Panzer 
here in game. This is the so-called command panzer. And you can see this by the officer uh, leaning out of the cupola with uh, binoculars here. It's uh, spotting and uh, giving targets to other tanks, most notably the panther tank and the elephant tank destroyer. The gun on this panzer fear is the shorter uh, uh, gun which we also saw on uh, the early Stug and on the uh, Sturmpanzer, although this is not really a howitzer, but it was designed to uh, take out enemy fortifications uh, or uh, groups of infantry and not enemy tanks. Um, this tank was equipped with high explosive anti-tank shells uh, which uh, were called Panzergranate 40. They were special uh, shells that had higher penetration value um, but over the course of the war those shells became uh, rarer and rarer because, the, uh, because Germany was lacking the materials that they needed for uh, producing those shells. Um, this one is the, uh, the D version, it's uh, Ausführung D1 uh, uh, and uh, the D was uh, produced um, in the early war uh, until, um, uh, until just before the invasion of the Soviet Union in, in 1941 and after that the, the new versions were being produced. Let's take a look at the successor of the Panzer IV, which is the Panzer V, the Panther. And the Panther has a, uh, a, a bigger armament. It, had, uh, it also has uh, various variants. Um, whereas the letters in the variants of the other tanks were um, in a logical order. Uh, that does not go for the Panther because the variants were uh, made in the order of first the Ausführung D, then Ausführung A and uh, the third version would be the Ausführung G, G. So the D version was the first one. It was produced in 1943 in uh, about 850 of them. Then the Ausführung A, they made about 2,000 of those between uh, 1943 and May 1944. And the Ausführung G was made from spring 1944 to the end of the war. And over 3,000 of those were made. And since the G was the best one, uh, it uh, had some uh, changes made. And uh, I guess this one is uh, Ausführung uh, A, because this one still contains the infamous shot trap. Um, the sloped armor on the front of the Panther was uh, sort of imitated of the T-34 and it was meant to bounce off AT shells like this. Um, the uh, enemy tanks uh, were often uh, getting some lucky shots and uh, after they found out that it wasn't really lucky they were actually aiming for it because if you would fire an AT shell at this part of the front hull it would bounce off into the front armor uh, uh, upper plate and that was uh, thinner armored than this uh, armor on the side and on the front so this would mean that it would be penetrated here in front of the turret and of course that was not intentional so they made uh, a plate here to deflect uh, those uh, shells. This one also has an MG42 on the top but it has as a coaxial machine gun the MG34 uh, um, because of aforementioned um, reasons. Um, this was uh, the uh, Panzerkampfwagen 5, so it was the successor of the Panzerkampfwagen 4 and uh, most people consider this one of the best tanks that were made in the German army. Okay, that brings us to uh, the last tank, the most famous one of all, I guess. This is the Tiger 
and as you can see it's uh, a very big tank and it has broad tracks uh, it was uh, equipped with um, it was equipped with uh, it could also be equipped with an mg42 and it had the 80 millimeter gun mounted in the turret so this would make the Flak 88 mobile and that was exactly what it was designed for so the um, Tiger uh, was a very expensive tank to produce it was uh, also very heavy and uh, some historians argue that if the Germans did not produce the Tiger then they might have won the war because the, the Tiger was a better tank but because they could not produce so many Tigers and instead the Allies were producing masses of T-34s and masses of M4 Shermans uh, the Tiger could be swarmed with those medium tanks and uh, uh, actually some uh, people say that every time a Tiger was shooting a T-34 in the field a new one would uh, roll off the factory um, uh, uh, ro roll out of the factory at the same time so uh, the Tiger was a very successful tank in the fact that it was a better tank than most others but it was not successful because it halted the production of more Panzer IVs for example and that's also uh, quite realistic in game because uh, you can see matches between people where one is producing heavy tanks and the other is massing mediums and the massing mediums usually win um, the Tiger was a very feared uh, tank by the Allies because they had nothing that could really destroy it except for air power and uh, therefore uh, a lot of reports of the Allies contained um, uh, the word Tiger uh, but uh, most reports actually are referring to Panthers in that case but because not all soldiers didn't know what a Tiger or a Panther really looked like they just said oh big German heavy tank that must be a Tiger so um, the uh, the Tiger uh, had uh, trouble, uh, some technical trouble sometimes and that means that it uh, had to be refitted behind the front very often. Okay, uh, this concludes our part of the vehicles. Let's take a look at the, uh, at the planes because the German Luftwaffe had uh, some uh, planes available and Enemy here we can see the Stuka doing a reconnaissance flight and the Stuka was a very common plane in the Luftwaffe but where's the Stuka? ah there it is um, and the Stuka is uh, the model of the Stuka is a very realistic model. It is actually the Stuka Junkers 87 model D. It has the anti tank guns. Um, not all Stukas had those. Uh, some Stukas were just designed to drop bombs. Uh, this one is. Uh, has 37 millimeter anti-tank uh, guns which you can see in action with this target. ability here there's actually two Stukas with the 37 millimeter guns and they can fire at enemy vehicles and let's see if we can make that happen selection owner enemy Oh, 
180 is hunting panzers. If that is where you need us. So, now we will see the uh, Stuka's fire at the T-70 here. Yes. And now you could see the tanks in action. Okay, like I said, most Stukas were not used in these anti-tank roll with the 37mm guns. But they are actually realistic because they did exist and they were used primarily on the Eastern Front. Uh, most of the time the Stukas were used for bombing runs, like uh, they could carry uh, four bombs of 50 kilos, has begun. like in this uh, fragmentation bombing run. Or they could uh, carry one uh, uh, big bomb of uh, 250 kilos or sometimes even 500 kilos. This one doesn't ha actually have the plane model, but uh, Stuka means Sturzkampf. It's a dive bombing, dive fight, does it mean? And um, that's actually quite realistic, uh, I although in reality, of course, there was a plane. What's not realistic about these abilities is the reconnaissance one, because reconnaissance was usually not done by Stukas, but by uh, Storch, the light uh, reconnaissance plane of the German army. Okay, this concludes our video about the German vehicles in-game, both armored cars, half-tracks, tanks, self-propelled guns and planes. So, I hope you enjoyed it, thanks for watching and have a nice day!